emanating from one of the most hype prospects in decades, folks. Victor Wembenyama. Your exact quote, if he does not point for point, rebound for rebound, duplicate Shaq's year, he's a total failure. If he's not 23 and 13, yes. he's a disappointment? Yes. See? And that you know, I'm, uh, Honestly, I, I didn't really know what I was doing on the court tonight, but uh, it's uh, the important is to be ready for, for the season. <laughs> You know, you guys, going into the opening weekend of the 2023 NBA Summer League, I had a pretty good feeling that it was going to be, I guess you could say eventful to say the absolute least, but oh my God, it was an absolute sh show because i mean from the build-up to the hype to the almost never before seen anticipation for someone to make their summer league debut yes most of us will remember victor Wenbanyama's entrance into the nba it just uh it probably won't be for the reasons that you were expecting and obviously we're also not going to be naive and completely discredit the very impressive performance that he put up just two nights following this but after seeing the absolute roller coaster of overreactions during this time span and along with Wemby likely being shut down for the rest of the summer league even though yes it is a very small sample size there's still some things that we saw within Wemby's play that I don't think many people out there expected to see this early but before we go any further, today's video is brought to you by our friends at Factor. Now you guys, since it's summer, I know that most of you out there are pretty busy. And with being busy, finding all of the time for the shopping, prepping, cooking, and cleaning that comes with trying to eat healthy, sometimes it just doesn't seem possible. But thanks to Factor and their fresh, never frozen meals delivered directly to your door, they do all the busy work for you. And by saving me all of this time with no prep, easy cleanup, and being ready in just two minutes, I can both keep sticking to my diet routine while also not missing a minute of this summer league action. But with having over 34 chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options to choose from, even including add-ons like breakfast items, shakes, smoothies, and juices, Factor provides choices for just about anyone. So be sure to head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code hoopsdigest50 to receive 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, Again, that is code HoopsDigest50 at Factor75.com. And thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now, honestly, if I sat here for like five minutes and tried to think of a godlike term to describe Victor Wenbanyama's play that you haven't already heard, I really don't think I could come up with a single one. And that's the thing about this, because from being deemed the greatest prospect in the history of professional sports, to a generational type of two-way player we've never seen before, to a seven foot five center with point guard skills that can effectively stretch the floor by shooting from the perimeter, I mean, if you're referred to as all of this before getting thrown into the spotlight that is NBA basketball, you're pretty much set up to fail and not meet expectations. Like, I am fully confident that even if Wemby went out and averaged 25 10 and 5 on 50% shooting from the field in both of these games, that still wouldn't have met the bar that most of the media hype had been giving him going into this. And even though his numbers walking away from this 2023 Summer League definitely are not as bad as it would seem, with most of the trolls out there loving to focus on the falls, the air balls, and even the poster, which was quite literally the last thing I expected to see, the film and overall play from Victor Wenbanyama over the course of this weekend was, for the most part, part exactly what we should have expected to see but it seems as if most of us were essentially brainwashed in this entire process for example, if you did any type of research into Victor Wenbanyama before the NBA draft, summer league, etc., I mean, with some of the highlight reels out there that included things like his easy transition buckets, his ridiculous putbacks, or even his one-footed floating three-point shots, as ridiculous as I know this is going to sound to some of you, people were probably given the idea from what they saw that he was damn near a 50-40-90 guy with this offensive versatility. But contrary to popular belief, it turned Turns out, he doesn't make every floater three, he's not a lights-out perimeter shooter, and like any other basketball player in the entire world, he has games where he struggles, and before you call him a bust, trust me, that doesn't make him a bust. In fact, and again, I know it's an extremely small sample size, but to pull up his Summer League stats once again, it's not a coincidence that his numbers are eerily similar to what he'd been putting up with Mets 92 in France the entire year prior. And what we need to wrap our head 
around because Lord knows we did not have this mindset going into Summer League is that it's not what he is, but instead it's what he can become. And from diving just a little bit deeper into the film from both of these games, there's a couple of things that really stick out from the rest. For starters, let's look at his shot selection and more specifically the ways in which he looked to create offense in these games. Because really, in hindsight, when I look at both of these performances and try to compare what Wenbenyama did in game one compared to game two, they're almost completely different approaches in terms of how he was used. Because in game one against Charlotte, where the film will obviously testify to this, the Spurs only looked to feed Wenbenyama in most situations anywhere but inside the paint. And I do get it to a certain extent because obviously we all know at this point that Wemby is more than capable of creating his own shot, driving the lane, or even creating for his teammates when he has the ball in the perimeter. But guys, it legitimately felt like an anomaly to see this team feed their 7-5 center posted up on the block. And that doesn't necessarily seem like the most effective strategy, at least if you were to ask me. But who's to blame more, when Banyama for not forcing himself into those situations more, or his teammates not feeding him in those given opportunities, you could probably make the case either way. Nonetheless, though, whatever got into Wenbanyama's head before the second game, while yes, he did still try to create from the outside from time to time, and we even got a taste of his absurd shot making, but more than anything else, you actually saw Wenbanyama both attack and try to establish looks from the inside. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it's not a coincidence that he almost dropped 30 in the process of trying to do this. Now with saying that, please don't take it the wrong way because I'm not trying to imply that the Spurs should limit Wenbanyama's outside freedom once they hit the regular season because as his international play has showed us, it's pretty clear that this part of his game can continually improve, but easily one of if not the biggest parts that is going to dictate how much growth and success that Wenbanyama sees in his rookie season is how specifically he's going to be utilized within the Spurs offense. And well, with Pop Popovich's five-year extension that he just signed recently, I think this is the least bit of worries for any Spurs fan right now. But honestly, when looking at the entire picture, aside from his shot selection and ball handling from time to time over this weekend, I mean, these were really the only areas where we saw some struggles and inconsistency. Because in terms of some of his other strong points on his scouting report, like his ability to consistently create for his teammates, his high basketball IQ, and personally what I'm most excited for, the new level of a defensive presence that he is going to bring to this team. Let's just say the rest of his arsenal was definitely on full display if you watched either one of these games. But of course, as everyone and anyone has said at one point or another in their lives, it's just Summer League, so I guess we'll have to wait and see if he can bring this to the court in October. Nonetheless though, you guys, I'm also extremely curious to hear what you have to think from everything that we saw out of Victor Wenbanyama, so please be sure to let me know in the comments what do you expect to see from him and what do you expect him to average in his rookie year in San Antonio. But also, I just wanted to say thank you so much to each and every one of you out there for watching. I appreciate you all more than anything. You all know this and I will see you guys in the next video.